Welcome to Off Grid Living with Lindsay. Today I'm going to show you how we install a tiny wood stove in our off grid shed. Today we're going to start with how we install a small stove in a shed. The stove here is really for aesthetic purposes, it's just to produce heat. Um, later on we'll be doing uh, another stove that you can actually cook on, um, but today I'll concentrate on just installing this stove and we'll be looking at the uh, base for the stove, insulation that's required, the flue, and actually putting the stove itself in. Um, first thing we're going to do is the base or hearth. Um, non-combustible material, it has to be non-combustible to go underneath the stove. Um, 12 mil thickness. Most of the details of that you can refer to on the blog. Um, in our case we're using a piece of glass, so just to protect it from the concrete floor, um, I'm just using a few pieces of self-adhesive fire rope to stick on the corners just to make sure that it sits on something a little bit softer. So then I can put the piece of glass down uh, in the position where the stove's going to go, nice and gently. And there we go, it's sitting there quite happily, ready, to, ready for the stove to be mounted up on that one. Next job. We need to actually make sure that the stove is properly insulated from any flammable material. So I'm going to use a piece of vermiculite, which I'm going to put in position behind the uh, hearth. And I'm going to attach it with a couple of screws and some of this tile adhesive. And I'll do that next. Okay. I'll tell you about the distances and things like that after I've done it, but a lot of that stuff will be on the blog as well, so you can check it there. So the vermiculite's in place, we've got um, 25 millimetres of vermiculite um, and this is to protect any combustible material that's sited behind it. Obviously this piece of glass isn't combustible but we deal with this like it was wood at the back of it. 25 millimetres of vermiculite, there needs to be a 15 millimetre gap, at least a 15 millimetre gap behind that. That's the thickness of a piece of copper pipe such as you'd have for um, uh, your water and all. Uh, we got a bit more than that, but that's fine. That allows us to site the stove um, 200 millimetres away from the vermiculite. That's about eight inches in Fahrenheit. Um, so there you go with that one, which is there he is now. Up here, because we've got combustible material here, where the flue's going to run, it's single wall flue, and it's going to be within 300 millimetres of combustible material. So we've got a little piece of non-combustible material to shield that with an air gap behind it, which is about 15 mil again, and that will protect the combustible material when the flue goes up through there. Right, okay, now we've got the stove in place, uh, our next job is to look at the flue, where the flue is going to go. Now in this setup we've got single wall and twin wall. Um, we're coming out of the stove in, in single wall. Uh, we've got a, a metre piece of single wall with a door in it to aid for sweeping and rolling. And we're going to use two 45s um, to offset the, the flue and pick up the, the twin wall flue. That needs support, so we're going to be putting a bracket at the top there to hold up the single flue. We're going out through the ceiling in twin wall stainless, and when we get out through onto the roof, we'll be using a twin wall black, and that will go into a Swedish anti dandruff cowl at the top of it there. All these options are, you know, look, check out the website on this because all the different flue options are, are available on there, and this, in fact, this whole kit will come in a box 
ready for you to actually put together an install. Okay, next job we're going to do, uh, we're going to make the support for the twin wall. Okay, now before I do that um, and take this thing to pieces so I can mend it on there, I want to mark the, the hole in the ceiling where the flue's got to go through. So I'm going to use the ring on this one to actually do that with a pencil and mark that one up. Um, if I just step up, it's going to go right in the middle above that and I can position this one here and draw around it. Now, when we draw around this, I can draw around the outside of it actually. When we draw around it, we're going to leave a, obviously a gap big enough for the flue to go through. Um, we're going to actually cut this a little bit bigger because we've got a lining on the inside of this roof if it was non-flammable, we could actually cut it through exactly. But because this one potentially would burn, we're going to cut the gap a little bit bigger and we're going to use some rope to actually insulate it. That's the proper stove rope I'm talking about, not just ordinary bit of uh, rope you've got lying about. Um, and that will actually you know, keep everything nice and tidy and make sure that nothing's flammable at all. Okay, so I've marked that one up on there. I'm going to cut it a little bit bigger than that and I'm now going to make the bracket. Yeah. And again, you know, if I get that levelled up, I can mark a line. Just let that move as I want then and get it in the right place. I'm going to drill a hole in the roof, all right? So, um, I'm health and safety, I need to put my safety glasses on, so I'm drilling upwards. And I've got a 10 mil drill I'm going to go through. I want to drill through on the outside of the, of the uh, line that I'm marking. So I want to cut that hole a bit bigger so I can get the twin wall up through the hole without too much trouble. So I'll just pop a little hole up through here in the roof and then we can see about cutting the hole out directly. There. One useful little tip, as well as the safety glasses, when you're drilling up like this, it's a good idea to do your shirt up so the hot swarf doesn't disappear down the front of your shirt, which is a bit uncomfortable. So, we've got a hole cut for the flue to go through. Um, we've got a plate to go on there to cover that over. And what we've got to do now is to go up and put the, the seal and the flashing on there to make the whole thing weather tight. So we're gonna pop up there and do that right now, all right? Right, this is the, this is the silicon flashing, as you can see. And we've got to cut this to fit around the flue. Now it's important that you don't cut it down this way because if you cause a split there, it's not gonna be weatherproof. For this particular twin wall, we wanna to cut to the one, two, three, the third little groove in. It says six and a half to seven on there. So basically what I'm gonna do on the third groove in, I'm gonna put the Stanley knife in that way, on, you know, across there. I'm gonna very carefully cut round so I just remove a complete ring right the way around the thing. And we'll come around to near enough there so we got the ring took off like that. And a nice edge here and no cuts down that way. I know I said dre, but um, it looks like this one might need a four. It may even need a five, the fifth ring cutting out. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to take off the fourth ring and I'll try it again because obviously with this, with a weather seal, you want it to be as tight as you can possibly get it. Okay, so I'm going to take this fourth one off and then we'll see if that one will slide over and seal up. And again, I'm just cutting around, being careful not to cut downwards at all. There we are. Well, we'll try that. <clears throat> something like it. 
Yeah, oh, but that's pretty good. We got a nice band around there, and that's sliding over there quite easy. So I'm going to say that one's good. Okay, so here we are on the roof. We've got a piece of twin wall with the weatherproof flashing around it, and we're going to offer this now down through the bracket, down through the hole. And then we're going to go down and we'll position the single wall pipe with the adapter on the top of it so that we know that we've got this piece of twin wall in the right place. When we know that, then we can bolt the flashing down and make everything weather tight and seal it all up. Okay. Now this now we've got this piece of twin wall fixed at the right height, what I want to do now is to press the whole flashing down so that I can form it around these bits of corrugation so we get a decent seal. And it's quite soft so you can actually mould it look, with your thumbs. It's fairly easy to do. And I'm just going to push it around, holding it in place. And then I can get drillings and fixings and make sure that everything's Press down nice and firm. Obviously there's seal to go on this as well. Um, right, we formed this to make a seal around the corrugated roof. What we need to do now is put the sticky on there so that we seal the thing down. So the way to do that, if we take a little marker pen and we mark on the outside here, whereabouts the outside of the um, flashing goes, just draw it around there sure I do it on this edge because this edge is the important edge here this is where the rain's going to run down so we want to make sure this bit's well sealed if this bit's okay the rest of it's going to be all right as well so I've just marked that up so I can see whereabouts that line of sticky stuff's got to go and what I can do now is roll this one up out the way quite carefully because I don't want to distort it too much. Just slide it up like that. And uh, I'm ready now to put the sticky stuff on there. If I've got a nozzle, lovely job, then I can cut this off. Like so. This is clear. I can put my nozzle on there, cut off to give a reasonable bead, like that, put the plunger in, and I'm ready to start squeezing the sealant out, which I'm just going to do across here like this. There we are. Make sure I've got a nice bead of this stuff particularly on this edge where the rain's going to be and do this side in the same way if you can see what I'm doing I'm going to use up the full thing of sealant on this so we've got the sealant right the way round and when we put that down it shouldn't be giving us any problems at all. I've got to be careful when I push it down because obviously I really don't want to squeeze the sealing out all over the place because that way it won't be sealing properly. So I'm just very carefully going to put this one back down over and just let it back down on where he went before being rather careful about squeezing any sealant out. That's it. In there. Just rest it down on it very carefully letting it back in it's okay now what we need to do now is use these boys this is a self drilling screws designed for this purpose and what we're going to do is to make sure that we seal this down in these gullies as tight as we can to the edge so we need to drill this quite carefully because you don't want to be drilling so that the bolt goes at an angle. You want it as square to the metal as you possibly can. 
I'll take a drill, make sure this is pressed down where I want it to go. And I'm gonna get in fairly tight to this and drill it as square to the edge of the metal as I possibly can. Like so. About there, I would say. Put one of these in and start to bolt it through. So there's my first one. Up so he's in the hole, and then basically I'll get these in, but I won't tighten them until I've got all of the bolts that I need. So I've got nine of the bolts now just started in here i've not clamped them down yet because i want to do that all in one go really and tighten it down properly um i'm going to do something similar to this at the back and then i shall do what fixings i can do in at the sides as well i'll show you those in a minute okay so again i'm just going to drill as tight in as i can and clamp it all down in a minute okay so we've now got the flashing in place bolted it down as you can see there's quite a lot of bolts here um, needs to be like that so that we stop as much water getting in under the seal as possible um, when we tighten them down we do it in a ring you know i go around and, and tighten them down one at a time and you can see when they're fairly tight because the little piece of rubbery stuff underneath there kind of does a bit of a splurge if i show you on this one just tighten it up a little bit eight mil spanner and there we go it's a bit messy as you can see because the stuff tends to squeeze out a little bit but that's absolutely fine and with that we're ready to start actually looking at putting the second part of the twin wall on and the cowl and the cravat and all the rest of it what i'm going to do now um, we've got some little caps little plastic caps for the tops of the bolts so we'll put these on now to make sure they stay there what we'll do is put a little blob of silicon on each one just a little bit make sure it stays on there and then if you do that you can take a cap these will just sit on there but a the little blob of silicon just make sure it all seals up and it stays where it should be so I'll just pop these on like that and push it down over the top of the bolt I shall do that all the way around and it just stops the top of the bolt from rusting and causing problems if you need to take it off it just makes life easier put a little bead of silicon around the top of this while we're at it just to try and reduce further reduce the amount of water that can manage to squeeze its way in there this is called a storm collar it's not an absolutely necessary piece of kit for this, but for the sake of about 15 quid, it looks better and it actually protects the silicon and the collar from the effects of the sun because the sun will eventually, you know, cause things to stiffen and it won't do a job properly. It also is an extra layer of protection against the, um, against the rain coming down through it, but you know, it, improves the weatherproofing of this and it just looks a lot better i'm just going to put uh, a little bit of sealant sealant around the top of this one to seal it in on the uh, twin wall and uh, swing it around to the right place and that will be that take it down like that a little bit of sealant around the top and that should be good as gold Gonna drop a twin wall and the and the Swedish um, anti downdraft collar on there. Drop it onto there like that. Obviously, we don't want to leave it like that, so we've got a collar on here to clamp the two fittings together, which is what we're going to do. Uh, if I turn that, you can see what I'm doing. I just want to lock this one into here. 
like so like that and then I can take up the slack with this clamp like that if it's too tight then obviously what I do is just back the screw off a little bit until I get it the right sort of tightness which is basically tight enough to not let it fall off I'll just put it right back now that's everything on the outside we've got done so now we're going to go down and finish off doing bits and pieces on the inside Alright, um, here we are back on the inside um, I pushed a piece of stove rope, the flame proof rope up around there just to tidy the edge up a little bit um, the thing is on a corrugated ceiling like this we could put a, a plate up there but in this case we're not going to bother we'll actually show you how to do that on the second video when we put the other stove in over there the bolts that you can see sticking through there we can cut those off later on with an angle grinder and tidy that up a bit uh, but basically we've got all the flue in place now the clips are on on each of these we've run a little bead of um, f uh, of uh, the sealant the fire sealant into each of these joints to make sure everything's sealed and then done it up with these nice little clips so that everything's solids are rock there it's absolutely perfect and now that flue is all there the stove is there the base is done everything and we're pretty much ready to light a fire and try the thing out <laughs> 